Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about humility, while we take a look at the story of a really unusual breakfast. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So what are we doing today? This. Taking out the trash. Take a look inside. Um, okay. Hold on. I feel like I'm doing surgery. Go ahead. One banana peel, <laughs> eggshell, more eggshells. I like omelets. <laughs> Coffee grounds. Dark roast, this is the way. Ooh. Why are we doing an archeological dig of your breakfast? Not just my breakfast. Let me guess, you lost a contact? Nope. I give up. What do you see? A bunch of garbage. I see pure gold. I think you need to get your eyes checked. This stuff can turn into something amazing. What? Ta-da! Dirt. Not just any old dirt, compost. Compost is decayed organic matter used to fertilize and nourish garden soil. This stuff adds all kinds of nutrients. It can make plants grow like crazy. But how does all that turn into this? I'm so glad you asked. Let's, Let's make it. <laughs> there are actually a bunch of ways to make compost. You can go outside and dig a hole about a foot deep, but you can also just compost on your kitchen counter with a bin like this. So you just dump the stuff into the bin and it turns to compost? Not quite. You need two ingredients for your compost recipe, greens and browns. I see green and I see brown. Actually, these are all greens. Fruit and veggie scraps, eggshells, tea bags, and coffee grounds are all greens because they have a lot of nitrogen in them. If you have this many greens, you need three times as many browns. Ooh, will these do? Nope. Browns are rich in carbon. Stuff like shredded newspaper, dried leaves, and cardboard. We need to feed our compost with one part greens and three parts brown. I'm on it. Right, that's one green, and then three, Round. There we go. Now we keep doing that, right? Yep. Two. Two. And three. three. And then we need one of this. Yes. Well, it is basically garbage. That's it? Pretty much. You can feed your bin greens and browns, and with the right balance of carbon and nitrogen, it'll help it decompose quickly. And it also helps to turn it over every few days. What a cool way to turn something no one wants into dirt. Really helpful, awesome dirt. <laughs> There's more than one way to make something good out of something not. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in John, the fourth book in the New Testament. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to come live among us. When Jesus grew up, he traveled from town to town, teaching and healing. But the religious leaders made plans to get rid of him. Jesus was crucified on a cross and died. But early Sunday morning, Jesus returned to life. Lots of his friends saw him. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Chloe. Hey Hi, Chloe. Chloe. After Jesus defeated death, he appeared to Mary Magdalene and then to his closest friends. And lots of other followers too. We can only imagine how amazed and overjoyed they were. And how many questions they had, especially Peter. I said three times, I didn't know Jesus. Is he angry with me? Does he still want me to be his friend? It was true. The night before Jesus was crucified, Peter had promised he would die before denying Jesus. Where I am going, you can't follow now, but you will follow me later. 
Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will give my life for you. Will you really give your life for me? Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. Within hours, Jesus was arrested. Many of Jesus' friends had fled, but Peter followed behind, trying to remain unnoticed. As Jesus was questioned by the high priest, Peter stayed outside, warming himself by a fire. A servant girl questioned him. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples too, are you? Peter was cold and scared, so he let fear take over. I am not. Two more times, Peter denied knowing Jesus. Then, a rooster crowed, just as Jesus had said, and Peter realized the terrible thing he had done. That had only been a short time before. Even though Jesus was now alive again, Peter wasn't sure what Jesus thought of him. So, Peter did what he often did when something was bothering him. He gathered a few friends and went fishing. All night long, they threw out their nets, but by early morning, they still hadn't caught a single fish. As they returned to shore, they saw a lone figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? No. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. That makes zero sense. Even though it seemed ridiculous, Peter gave it a try. And within moments, the net was so full of fish, they couldn't even pull it onto the boat. It's Jesus. In his excitement, Peter forgot his worries and splashed as fast as he could toward Jesus. When he reached the shore, Peter found that Jesus had already cooked fish over a campfire. Come and have breakfast. Jesus offered the fish and some bread to Peter and his friends. The last time they had eaten together was the night Jesus died. But so much had happened since then. They may have been quiet as they ate, wondering how things would be different now. When they finished breakfast, Jesus called Peter aside. Maybe they took a walk on the beach. I bet Peter's heart was pounding fast. This is it, Peter. Do you love me more than these others do? This was not what Peter expected. He took a deep breath and answered. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Now, let's be clear. There were no sheep on the beach. Jesus didn't mean for Peter to take some lambs out into a field of green grass. But many times, Peter had heard Jesus call himself the Good Shepherd, while the people around him were like sheep. Jesus wants me to take care of the people who follow him. Again, Jesus asked, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Peter was getting anxious again. Why had Jesus asked a second time? Didn't Jesus believe him? A third time, Jesus asked, Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. <sighs> Peter was frustrated that Jesus kept repeating this until he realized. Jesus has asked me three times if I love him. Maybe that's once for every time I said I didn't know him. Jesus had not only forgiven Peter, Jesus was inviting Peter to care for all the people who would follow Jesus now and in the years to come. Following Jesus wouldn't be easy, but it would be worth it every step of the way. The end. Wow, so Peter really messed up, but Jesus still loved him. Yeah, Jesus didn't leave him hanging. Exactly. Peter was the one who denied Jesus, but Jesus took time to make it right between them. So what's our part in the story? Well. If someone wrongs you, it's super easy to stay mad. But even if you feel like you have a right to stay mad, humility means choosing to forgive and make things right. Maybe your friend didn't call and invite you to their house on Saturday like they said they would. Instead of being mad and refusing to talk to them until they talk to you first, you can go to your friend. You can tell your friend you were hurt, but still care about them and want to hang out. Or your big sister promised to give you a ride to school but she left early, and you had to wait for the bus in the rain. 
Instead of giving your sister the cold shoulder, go to her. Tell her that it wasn't okay, but you still love her. And if you are the one who hurt someone else, it's just as important to make things right with them. This is not easy stuff. But it's super important. You're absolutely right. See you next time. Bye, Bye Chloe. Chloe. So here's the thing. Put others first by making things right. Got it. Do you think Peter and Jesus composted their breakfast leftovers? No idea. Hold on a sec. All right. <laughs> she looks hungry. <laughs> Apple core? Nom, 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 nom. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time.